Charles. What does Charles mean? Why did you name your clothing brand Charles? It's quite an unusual name. Char uh, means tea in English. Hi everyone, I'm Darcy Sean and this is my brand new show, Spotlight. This show will provide a true insight into many successful Nottingham students' lives, where they've launched a business from their uni bedroom or undergone some of the biggest challenges. Stay tuned for a spotlight on their lives. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. This is the first episode of the series. I'm with Josh Harris, founder of Char Clothing. Josh, tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so my name is Josh, I'm 21, studying here at the University of Nottingham. And as you say, I founded my own clothing brand during lockdown um, last year. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll find out a bit more about Yeah. That. So tell us, what does Char mean? Why did you name your clothing brand Char? It's quite an unusual name. Yeah, so it's one of, one of the questions I get asked quite a lot. <laughs> and essentially, Char uh, means tea in English. Okay. It's quite strange. Um, it does have a story behind it. So Do you like drinking tea or something? <laughs> I love drinking tea. Um, but I was actually on a family trip to San Francisco and we, were, we went to visit the Chinatown there which I think is the biggest Chinatown outside of China. Yeah. Um, and we were sat in a tea shop, and I just love all the, the varieties of tea, like the traditional Chinese pots on the wall, yeah. all the different flavours. And that was where kind of the brand was all coming together, so to use my Mandarin um, abilities and mixing everything together. So I thought, quite catchy. Yeah. And... Here we are. Yeah, it is a really, really catchy name. And when did you come up with the logo? Tell me about that process. Yeah, so the logo was a bit of a process. Um, yeah. A lot of sketches. Yeah. Deciding how I was going to configure it. A lot of logos are very simplistic. So I wanted to kind of follow in that way, keep it quite minimalist and neat. Yeah. So I incorporated the Mandarin mixed with the um, English. Mm hmm and stuck them together, and then had a little play around with, you know, should I put the Chinese first, English first? Yeah. And different fonts is really important. And then actually showed it to all my family, my girlfriend, and actually this little full stop here, that was my girlfriend's suggestion. Oh, I didn't I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I so like that. Chinese, they use full stops, and they're like little circles. Yeah. But it's quite cool. And Ooh. actually, in kind of all the branding and marketing, I use that little full stop quite a lot. Wow, that is that's really interesting. So your your clothing wear has a real cultural significance, I guess. Wow, really cool. So, what's some advice you would actually give to people who want to start their own clothing brand? Mm. So, I mean, just go for it. It's very easy to say because there are definitely obstructions along the way. I've had many. Yeah. Um, Can you tell me about these obstructions? What's yeah. been your biggest challenge? Biggest challenge is just making a name. Yeah. Um, so you go through a phase of coming up with a great brand, great products, sampling, manufacturing, and then you produce them. But obviously you've got friends and family supporting you initially. Yeah. And then it gets to a stage like, okay, I need to get this out into the, the world. Yeah. And the competition is ridiculous for clothing brands. I know. But yeah, so there's obstructions. You've just got to try and market it, try and find a little niche and go with it that way. Yeah. Hit social media as much as you can. Yeah. Um, but as long as you've got a USP and you believe in your brand yeah. and ask others, because if they also believe in your brand, then you've probably got something good and then just, yeah. just go for it. What is your USP? So <laughs> the main one, I think, is kind of themed around Mandarin. Yeah. The biggest USP, I would say, because having studied it for about seven years now. Oh, so do you speak Mandarin? Then, yeah. I didn't know that. You kept that very quiet. <laughs> yeah, so... I actually just came from a Chinese class. No way. <laughs> so the Mandarin, or just having a passion for the language and the culture, Yeah. I think re representing that for your brand is probably the biggest USP. Mm -hmm. I think it's not many people have that. Yeah. And then a few other small USPs is kind of our sustainability, conscience. Okay. And obviously the play on tea, and each garment is its own unique design yeah a really certain amount of stock on each one mm -hmm. so that the idea of fast fashion is yeah kind of, eradicate yeah, it has, yeah. we don't want that um and another one of the usps i think is it's very personal yeah so all the orders are fulfilled by myself 
Well, actually, some of my family are helping out with that at the minute whilst I'm here at uni. I love that. It's a real family yeah. network helping um, you. Just like handwritten notes, just yeah. communicating with the audience a lot. Yeah. So you mentioned social media. Mm-hmm. What has been your main social media channel? And what has been the most useful social media channel to help really get your brand out there? Yeah. I mean, TikTok yeah. is huge. I think a lot of people know that that was like a lockdown hit. Everyone jumped on there. A lot of people just started scrolling. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of people started making. And I was one of those that just downloaded it for a bit of fun. Yeah. The beginning of lockdown. And I said, you know, there's no way I'm going to start making videos. Ended up starting to make some videos with my girlfriend, just some jokes videos. And a few of them started to hit big views started building up a little bit of a following. Then clothing came. So I thought, got a few followers on there, and they'll jump onto the um, onto TikTok with the clothes. And since then just been trying to be consistent, yeah. growing followers. So that's been massive. Instagram's a bit more formal. Okay, um, yeah. But great for branding. Mm-hmm. I think when people look at your feed, they can really just see straight away. So for me, the aesthetic's quite big. Yeah. So a lot of leaves, a lot of simplistic aesthetic like Chinese language um, and I think that's displayed quite quite nicely through the Instagram uh, and obviously they all direct people to the website which is most important. Yeah definitely and how do you go about editing your Instagram posts? Well like for someone that wants to start their own yeah. business is there any apps or any any sort like any sort of software which you've used which has really helped you along the way to help edit your videos or help you create really good Instagram posts? Mm-hmm. So a huge one which like has been the whole brand is Wix. Okay, so that's yeah. The website software or platform where you can basically build your whole website and it takes care of so many behind the scenes bits yes. that I just wouldn't have been able to do yeah. without it. So for example, all the order fulfillment, you know, sending confirmation emails, tracking expenses, finances, automations, so many things. Yeah. And also building the actual site, which I've done myself, which I can't build a site other than through work and be huge. I believe Shopify is also very good. Yeah. Which is kind of an alternative. But then in terms of content and social media, I would say Canva. Oh yeah, I use Canva. Canva is yeah. great. So, so good. You can make presentations, you can make Instagram stories, posts. Um, I actually use use it to so take a load of photos, video, put it on Canva, edit it, and then use it on the website yeah. as well. So, it's good for making logos, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's great for logos as well. I think I actually made the logo on there. Yeah. Or played around with the logo. So it sounds like you're doing so much. You're designing things. You're, I don't know, you're getting your garments out there. How do you have time for all of this? You're a university student. I mean, yeah. I find it hard to balance everything. Just mm-hmm. tell me, how do you actually balance your work and char clothing? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's hard. It's very hard. I think one way I'm balancing it quite nicely this year is that studying liberal arts yeah i do here the module choice is very flexible okay so at uni i'm actually studying a third of mandarin a third of business and then i've got <laughs> some core modules yeah so it all kind of fits together okay and i because i love the clothes so much i always find like an angle in university work that i can apply to my clothes yeah whether that's the chinese or the business Okay. Um, but in terms of time, I just I just find the time. I don't know. Yeah. Because I'm so passionate about the clothes, I think I can get back from a long day of uni you just, and I can still yeah. just sit down and enjoy you know, designing or contacting yeah. or audience. Definitely. Like and what about, cha- like, I know we spoke about challenges, but has anything really drastic happened, which has, I don't know, put a bit of a foot, foot in the works or anything? Anything which has gone wrong for you and something that you've learned from that? Yeah, there's a few things that go wrong. There's also some great moments that have been like, wow, that's yeah. unbelievable, which I can speak about after. Um, but in terms of big problems, I mean, one that was bad was a manufacturing fault. Okay. That I was told the product had been washed and tested. Mm-hmm. So normally the in the production line, it will go through obviously production of the garment, then the print, yeah. the embroidery, and then normally like a wash test. <laughs> and I was told that I had finished the test and I'd done all the marketing, launched this amazing product, and there was a fault. Oh, no. When the customers had the product, basically the print just ran through the okay. garment. Okay, yeah. 
So that was a big problem, um, which resulted in a lot of refunds quite quickly. Um, you know, I didn't even, I didn't have a leg to stand on really. Obviously, I took it up with the manufacturers because it wasn't great at all. Yeah. Uh, I managed to sort it, but I think, yeah, I wash test the product myself now. <laughs> yeah. Just to be sure before. Yeah. And when, so do you actually prefer just to do everything yourself? Do you get a bit, because it is obviously your brand and your company, do you get worried about distributing things to other people, assigning tasks to people? Is that something that you just hate doing? Because I know you seem like you like to control things. You seem like you like to really make sure every product is perfect. So is that something that you struggle with? So I love to be in control. Yeah. It's, you know, it's something I've just, seen grow throughout the last year it's actually a year tomorrow oh happy anniversary <laughs> happy anniversary um but yeah i think the example i just gave before about the manufacturing fault is i just would have loved to see the whole process and i could have said you know why is this one not being one yeah. tested before it gets out of hand so i think that's why i'm a bit of a controlled freak maybe when it comes to clothing yeah but i'm actually not like that uh, externally no no i can imagine <laughs> though i mean your your clothing you want it to be perfect exactly. so yeah it's always striving for perfection yeah definitely. i think it works but it's got its downsides as well yeah and what about you mentioned some really great moments of success mm. what has been something that's really made you feel like i've got this yeah it's going great <laughs> um so there's actually two yeah little stories um the first one was very early on in the the, the launch it was right at the beginning and i think that's where you just start to doubt it a little bit and you just think okay is this actually going to work yeah and i was wearing one of the new white jumpers it's our licorice one which was probably our biggest seller um, and i was wearing that actually just down the road here in sainsbury's and a random guy that i've never seen before a massive guy just came up to me and he just said, I love your jumper, where is it from? Oh, that's such a nice feeling. <laughs> and I just, I literally froze. I don't even know if I replied to him in the end. I was, I was so shocked because at that stage, it was like, oh, so, you know, is this going to work? What yeah. What am I be doing? You know, even just wearing your own product. And I was just like, okay, I've got this now. And that was like a real motivator to just yeah. get on with it, carry on. Small moments like that yeah, really make really a difference. Amazing. And like customer feedback, I guess. Huge. Yeah, it makes yeah, you feel good, yeah. Sure. And I think another one, which is quite recently, which is crazy. So I was actually in the gym yeah. <laughs> uh, with some of my mates and just literally got an order come through. So it's all with Wix, it's all on the phone. Yeah. Notified everything. And it was some guy in France. Okay. Who <laughs> ordered the whole collection, like, the, like everything. Wow. And I was just like, you know when you just do a double take? I was like, yeah. hold on. So this is what, 10 months into the brand. I'm pretty much focusing on the UK, but I've got some guy in France that's just called the whole collection. And did you ship it all out to him? Yeah, so I shipped it. I actually had to send him two boxes. Oh my gosh, that's really random. Yeah. Did you ever get to the bottom of that? Why did he want everything? <laughs> so he actually messaged after to say, you must let me know when the, the few things out of stock come back in. Wow. So I want them as well. Um, and again, it's one of those moments where I was just took a Stunned. minute to actually, yeah, sink in. And then I just thought, okay, yeah, we've got something here. Yeah. Um, and to think that I'm, I say, impacting their lives by this. Uh, that no, but you extent, are. Like yeah. You know, delivering them quality clothes in so many different countries. Yeah. Crazy. And what is your, you mentioned how that guy clearly loved clearly loves your clothes. So. What is your um, best selling item? What is your number one? <laughs> Yeah, I mean... It's a hard question, that. Hard. I know it is. In terms of numbers, I think I just mentioned the licorice stuff. It's a white hoodie. Okay. With, like, a navy embroidery, and it's got some navy Chinese text yeah. on the pocket, actually. Um, that sold super well. I wasn't wow. sure if it was a white jumper, but that sold amazingly. Um, and I've got some of my favourite products, which are also... Yeah. Sales. I'm hoping this one, which... Yeah, I really like that. Does it have matching tracksuit bottoms, like joggers? No, 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 no. no. Just a solo piece. Um, but this one's coming tomorrow. Yeah. I'm hoping, I mean, the, the demand's been very good for that. And, you know, a lot of people signed up for the mailing list, stuff like yeah. that. So I'm hoping this will be a big one. And just the loungewear as well, the socks, the shorts, okay. t-shirts. 
Yeah. Can you just like speak us through, because people that haven't seen char clothing, yeah. can you speak us through from colours to what you actually have? You mentioned socks. I didn't even know that. Like what garments do you sell? What colours does it come in? Tell me a bit more about your range. Yeah, for sure. So I think, again, going back to the USP thing, one thing I love is that each product is unique to itself. Okay. So I wouldn't do this design in a green oh, or different colours, yeah. basically. So I view each product as literally that in itself, mm. which is named after a certain tea. So this is actually jasmine. Oh, I didn't it's, know that. Oh, that is um, so interesting. And so this will be a unique jasmine piece that basically you can only get in this colour, this, this embroidery, this exact yeah. style. Um, so our original hoodie is the chamomile, which is all about San Francisco and it's got wow. some coordinates and it's got some photos that I actually took there. And yeah, so in terms of colours and stuff, it's, it varies. Obviously, I've got to look at trends and yeah. So going into more like a wintery time, I thought this would be quite suitable. Colour. Yeah. And actually, I got some feedback from these because I'm following on which colour to go for. Okay. And the royal blue is actually the number really? one for this time of year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and browns are very in at the brown, moment. Everyone yeah. seems to be wearing brown. Brown, I think it's that <laughs> essential. <isn't> yeah. <laughs> since they released that collection of just like neutral. Yeah. It was massive. Um, but yeah, so there's a process of choosing colour, deciding which garments are going to be in. Obviously, winter time's a bit more oversized than yeah. this, like this yeah. one. Um, the summer collection was more like soft caps with some shorts, some white socks. Um, keep quite a few t-shirts yeah. um, and yeah it's just trying to be a couple months ahead at all times definitely so just to try and you know, figure out what you think yeah. of in fashion and when's your next big launch what, when, when when should we be looking out for what day yeah. <laughs> so, I mean tomorrow's a, a small one like a small winter capsule yeah um, just with a few beanies and this jumper and then we've actually got something to be looking out for is the Chinese New Year, okay. which is early next year. I'll be planning a big giveaway with a few other small uh, businesses, Yeah, which we're, we all kind of have a, the same um, backbone of like, Asian influence or yeah. Chinese influence. Um, also working with a British-born Chinese um, guy who is a graphic designer. Wow. And he's producing really cool things. Yeah. So we're going to do something cool. Yeah. So that's probably the next thing. Yeah. Thing. It's really, really cool. So just to wrap things up, yeah. um, just because this is a student show and I'm sure many business students will, will be watching this, um, I'd just like to know, I know I mentioned earlier about one piece of advice, mm. but is there something that you have installed within within yourself to keep on going and keep motivated? And I don't know, because I know when you start a business, it is, it's, it's like a... How do yeah. we, yeah, how do we, yeah, it's like a roller coaster, yeah. up and down, up and down the whole time. What have you really kept you motivated along the way? Because it is an awful amount of commitment. I mean, it sounds like from the mandarin to the design, it sounds like a long process. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> I think you need to absolutely love what yeah. you're doing, no matter what business that is. You know, if you're setting up a cookery business, if yeah. you love cooking, if you're doing a fashion business, just love designing and clothes. Because, as I say, you, when you're tired, you finish a long day of uni, this is like the hobby. Yeah. Now. So you need to absolutely love it. That's number one. Number two is find some inspiration or influences that you just look up to. So mine, or who's been a massive one for so many people yeah. in today's society, is Ben Francis with Jim Oh, Sharp. of course. Amazing. Um, I've probably watched every one of his YouTube videos. Yeah, and he's so active on LinkedIn. So active on LinkedIn. <laughs> um, and just someone you look up to, who you can watch a video, yeah. take some link from that video, maybe try and apply it to your business. Yeah. It's massive. And other, other ways to keep committed is, you know, just keep speaking to people. Yeah. Getting advice from others is massive. I've had so many calls with agencies and people that have also started their own brands, some CEOs of slightly larger brands, and even if you just take one thing from a phone yeah. call or a Zoom call, it's so important. Yeah. And then implement that to your own brand. 
I've actually realised that as well. Just even if it's a 30 minute phone call and even mm -hmm. if one thing comes out of it, exactly. tick, you know, you've done. Useful, yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much. It was so thank great you. to talk to you and I'm really looking forward to the next launch. Great. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you.